Boom! Okay, welcome to the multi-user server video. And also, we have some people here with us. Hello. There they are. Very excited. Um, okay, so I'm just going to share my screen here. Okay. So... <clears throat> So in the last video, you guys learn about making a server, how to accept connections, uh, bind your listen socket to an address, or bind it to a port, rather, rather, <laughs> and then learning the difference between an accept socket and a client socket, like a socket that's actually used to communicate with a client that has connected. Um, so today we're going to talk about a problem with this code here that we've written um, which you might have already figured out since it's called like multi-user servers so I'm gonna start by modifying our server a bit so instead of just taking one client reading a message then printing and then sending a message and then ending uh, we're gonna have it just spin forever so when a con client connects, we're going to spin forever and just keep reading messages, kind of like a chat chat uh, room or something. So it's like a client collects, he sends messages for as long as it wants. So I am going to... I'm actually going to get rid of this. So I'm just going to while through this bad boy. Um, so I'm going to accept the socket. Very nice. And then I'm just going to keep reading. So I'm just going to make a little buffer. Uh, short <laughs> buffer. Going to read 1024 bytes. And uh, I'm going to receive it. So I'm just going to re receive from the client into the buffer. The buffer is 1024 bytes and I don't care about any flags. And then I'm just going to print it. And I'm not going to actually... I'm going to teach you guys a new way to do... Uh, to handle this uh, null pointer... Or, uh, sorry, null terminated thing in the char array. Uh, there is actually just a printf specifier... To uh, handle this as well. So first I'm going to do receive size. And if I do this, right, this is where the problem arose. If I use printf the buffer as just a string, that's when we get the null terminator problem, right? So I am going to... Um, yeah, let's save the server like that. And then I'm going to modify the client to um, work with this new... work with this new server. So when we connect, we're also going to while... Whoops. And we're just gonna read a char, uh, read a string from the command command line. So I'm gonna make a buffer. I'm gonna call it send buffer actually. And I'm gonna get gets s. So gets just reads one line from the command line, or the command prompt rather. And then we have to do the underscore s because Windows is paranoid. Uh, so an underscore s will just make it secure in quotation marks. Um, so that we don't accidentally read more than our buffer. So if our buffer was too small and we kept kept writing in the in the command prompt, then we would read more characters than we could actually put in the buffer, and we'll get all kinds of uh, security issues. So that's why they made the underscore s um, variants. So we're gonna read into the send buffer, and then with the uh, underscore s variant, then we can input the size here. So that's the size of the buffer, so it won't actually try to write into the buffer more than the size. Our size is 1024. So now we're reading a line from the command prompt. And then we're going to send it to the server. So we're going to send to the... what was our socket called? Your soc. We're going to send our send buffer. Our length, we're just going to do strlen. And then no flags. 
There we go. Yes, it's only one take, Benjamin, so I'm, I'm, I'm panicking right now. Um, okay, so this does this make sense, what I used it here, <clears throat> with the, both the server and the client? Uh, screw but, up to uh, the server again. What about uh, the listening? Oh, that was the... Okay. Cool. Well, wait, uh, how do you null terminate that? What did it say about that? Yeah, so it's not null terminated right now. I'm going to show you in a little bit a different way okay. to null terminate the string. But yes, that's cool. a good question. Yeah. Thanks, Oliver. You get a gold star. No problems. Thank you. <laughs> 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 all right cool if there are no questions we're gonna run this and see what happens all right so i'm gonna run twice control f5 so i'm gonna start a server on port uh, 123 uh, and then i'm gonna start a client on port 123 Okay, so nothing went wrong. Um, we're not actually pasting out anything when a client has connected. Maybe we should do that next, but... So I'll just type hello. Okay, cool. So I typed hello, sent that over, and then we get the error that we saw before, right? Where there's no null termination, so it's just gonna print forever. Until we get this sigma here. Um, and I have a question for you guys. Why does it end? Why, what actually happens here? How long will it print for? 1024, I'm assuming. Why? Because that's what you allocated in your, your array. But why will it stop? Why uh, will it keep going after 1024? Because you type, I guess it knows how long, of, how long the array is, maybe? Mm, that's a good guess, but no. Okay. But good guess. And the other, and the other takes. When will this stop printing the string? The buffer ends. Sorry. When the buffer ends, right? Mm, not necessarily. Oh, you... no, when the program ends. Mm, it will print until it just encounters a zero somewhere. So the printf, oh. when you give it a string and a char pointer, it will assume that the string is null terminated, right? So it will just keep reading memory past the buffer. Um, if after the buffer, so if we have a block of memory, right, and after the buffer is immediately a zero, for some reason, that it just happens to be a zero there, then it will stop. But there might be maybe some other memory there and it will just keep reading that memory. So perhaps, actually, we can try this if I put like an integer here. Um, or yeah, I'll just I'll do this. I'll do a char pointer. No, yeah, I'll do. Uh, yeah, I'll do this other ten. <laughs> I wonder if I can do this actually equals. Uh, 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 e. This is a nice experiment. Let's see what happens. So after the buffer, I put another local variable here. That's just a char uh, array. And I just put some, put some data in it and then also a zero. So let's see what happens. This will be a nice experiment actually. And if it doesn't work, I'll be sad. So let's see here, we're going to start a server, port 1, 2, 3, start a client, port 1, 2, 3, hello. Okay, so it didn't work, oh, that's sad. But potentially... Can you, can you try it with the uh, the other array being declared before yeah, the buffer? I just want to see if that works, because yeah. like if it's the stack, then maybe... I yeah, I was know. thinking the same thing, that probably on the stack it should be before. So let's try that. Whoa! Oh shit! Okay. DDoS. 
<laughs> Let's not talk about that just yet. So I'm gonna start a server. One, two, three. Client. One, two, three. Hello. Oh, okay, there we go. Good catch. So now we can say hello, and then use the bunch of garbage. And then we have hey dot here, and then it ends. And that's because we don't need to talk about like what order this is are on the stack or whatever. The, the important part is that it actually won't end actually buff after the buffer is over. It will just keep reading until it finds a zero. So in this case, it kept reading into the other variable and started reading those that data. And that variable just happened to have a zero in it. So that's why it ended here. So this is not really related to networking or anything. It's just sort of, uh, if you're gonna work in C++, it's very important to know these sort of things. Um, it's good to get comfortable with how does memory work, how does C strings work, and stuff like that. So that's why this could potentially go on for a lot longer if just the memory doesn't happen to have a zero in it for a while. So you could just keep printing and um, potentially do some damage even if we're sort of writing or something. Is that why on uh, uh, some uh, part of the uh, C++ programs we have this return zero to tell when the uh, program should stop? Uh, no, not really. That's more in the return codes of programs. Uh, so when you return zero, that means your program exited with no errors. Okay. Um... Yeah, so anyways, no termination, important for strings. The way we're going to do this, fix this this time, is that printf actually has a specifier that we can use. So when it's printing a string, instead of reading the string like a null terminated string and you just keep reading until it counters a zero, we can actually specify how long the string is for printf. So if we type dot... Um, star s so we have uh, percent dot star s this means to printf that before the buffer we're gonna put another variable or another argument that is how long the string is so I'll just put receive size here so now printf when it's seeing this specifier here it will say okay I first need to read an integer to read how long is the string, and then the char buffer. And then it will just read that many bytes of the char buffer and print that out to the console. So let's try it. Again, we're sort of in like C trivia land, but I think it's good to get some, get at least some touching base with these this kind of things. That'll be port one, two, three. Client, port one, two, three. Hello. And there we go. So now it just prints the five characters. And there is no zero after this dot, right? Like we didn't null terminate the string manually. Instead, we told printf to just print those six characters with the receive size here. Very cool. All right, so anyways, done with that. Now if I print some, and now we say, if we keep sending, Yo, how are you? It will keep printing them out on the server. So our while loop has worked, so now we can keep sending messages for as long as we want. Um, and that's great. Fantastic. So first of all, I'm going to add some new lines here, <laughs> because it's kind of annoying that they're sort of on the same line. Uh, so I'm actually just going to put the new line here. After the string. There we go. Oh yeah, also, just make sure, you can just interrupt me whenever with, uh, with questions. You don't need to wait or anything, just so you know. In case you do have them. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Fantastic. Um, all right, so what are some problems now that we need to deal with? Uh, the first of all, we've... Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, I my mic was turned off. Uh, oh. 
Uh, I'm curious about the other variable uh, that you you know the hey. If you put the zero in quotation mark, will it act the same as if, if it's not? No. So there's a difference between the character zero and just a zero. So the character zero has value. Uh, I don't know the ASCII code, but let's look it up actually. Uh, let's see. ASCII table. So the character zero actually has value 48. So if I put character zero here, this will be 48. If we're talking about like the number that will be here, it will be 48. So it's very important to realize that the character zero is very different from null, which is value zero. You can put a slash before it if you're going to put quote, uh, put it in quotes, and then it will become a null. Like you can escape it yeah, that way. Yeah, you can escape it this way as well. But it's <laughs> yeah, you can do that. That's a good point. So then, carry is ASCII by default. Uh, how do you make it Unicode? Um, well, let's not let's not fucking go there. Yeah, let's, not, let's not go there. Good question, Oliver. <laughs> but let's not go there. Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> there be dragons uh, in Unicode land. Um, yes. Okay. So let's talk about a problem that we have right now. If the client, this is the client. If the client disconnects, if we then this happens. Is this monster? <laughs> this monster grows forever. Um, so obviously something's going wrong here. Uh, you see the I'm good and stuff and the hey. So obviously the printing is just sort of printing whatever was there before. And if we actually break. So I'm going to debug this. So I'm going to start a client. And then debug a server. So I'm just going to hit regular F5. Just so we get the debug attachment. Start a server. Port 123. Start a client. Port 123. And then. Hello. Okay. And then disconnect. So we get the, the, the craziness. I'll just break here. So let's see what happens. So receive will return minus 1 here and that is the important part because if receive returns minus one that means the socket has been disconnected the, the socket we're trying to read from is no longer a valid socket so for some reason the socket has become invalid most likely in this case because the client has actually disconnected so what we'll do is we'll use this information knowing that if receive size is negative one that means our client is gone So that is how we're going to handle whoops. So that is how we're going to handle disconnects on our server. So if receive size is minus one, then we'll print something like client disconnected and then it's return. So let's see now what happens. Start a server, one, two, three. Client, one, two, three. Hello, how's you? And then I'll disconnect. And there we go. Now we got a client disconnected message, and then, yeah, the, the program quits. Tinder in a nutshell. What? Tinder in a nutshell. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Good one, just as you get a gold star. Yeah. Uh, okay, so... Um, so, yeah. So that is how we're going to handle client disconnects uh, from now on. Uh, there are a bunch of other functions uh, that we can call to sort of pull the situation. But in the end, we're going to be receiving a lot, like all the time. So it's a good way to check the connection as here. Uh, at least for now.
It's a very simple way. So the other problem, which is the point of this whole lecture really, is that we can only handle one client at a time. If I open up one server and then the two clients, so I will start the server. I'll connect a client. Hello. And then if I try to connect another client, let's see what happens. One, two, three. Hello. One, two, three. Yo, 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 yo. So nothing's happening here. We're still connected, which is kind of, um, which is kind of interesting, actually. We're still connected to the server, because if we didn't connect, then we should get something like this. We should print something like connect fail or something. And we definitely shouldn't be able to write in a console with gets. But the server doesn't respond, right? It doesn't write our messages. Nothing comes up. So why is that? Can anyone guess? You're only receiving from the one buffer that you uh, bound the first user to. It's the, yeah, the socket, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we're only accepting a single connection, right? So in our code, we only accept once, and then in a while loop, we just keep receiving forever. So there's no chance for another client to come in and be accepted because it, it, it will just never happen. And also receive is not async, right? That's blocking, you said before, right? Yes. So that's the other problem, that it's like, how would we even do that? Like, how can we receive from multiple clients if uh, receive is blocking? Open, open more ports. I'm assuming yeah. just kind of like asynchronously binding a function to receive, if that's possible somehow. Exactly. So that's a good point. Uh, for Henrik's point, open up another port, we, we will still run into the same problem, right? Where it's like uh, a program can only receive one at a time, right? So uh, there would be no way for us to receive even from multiple, points e uh, multiple ports either. Unless we use threads! Woo! Hey, hey, thread, 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 thread. <laughs> Okay, do so. we do we need to start a thread for every single incoming connection? Though? Yeah, it seems like a buddy. lot of threads. Yeah, buddy. Oh no. Yeah, buddy. Okay, so we're gonna talk about threads. Threads. But wait, wait. So like, if you're like Facebook and you have like thousands of users, I'm assuming that's still a queue somehow, right? Um, or do they have like thousands of threads and one yes, thread. thread? Thread pool, right? So. Uh... I uh, I wouldn't know for a huge company like Facebook. Um, they might use a different solution. I'm not quite sure, honestly, but it might just be that they start a thread and then they use micro that up between multiple servers so that one server doesn't get overloaded with too many threads and too many connections. But I, I honestly don't know. Um, it could be that they use some sort of non-blocking method. I'm not sure. Cool. Um, right. So, have you guys heard of threads before? Yes. I've worked with them before in the, the one of the past assignments. I mean, should we pretend that we haven't? No, like, I, I'm just curious. Oh, yeah, we've done like a tiny bit, but nothing like... Okay. We haven't really used them much, I would say. Okay. Are we using SEL threads? No. Okay. So, so yeah, I then I don't need to spend too much time on what a thread is, but I, I'll just say quickly that, you know, um, when we're running a program, you have a list of instructions, right? That's what's happening on the CPU level. You have a bunch of instructions and the computer will, you know, go about its day executing these instructions. Uh, oversimplified, this is not actually what's happening at the CPU level, it's way more complicated, but oversimplified, the CPU will uh, execute these instructions one and one in order. Um, so a thread means spinning up a new CPU instance. It could be another core, or they could be like uh, sort of interweaved in the same core. It's sort of just up to the CPU interrupt how it's looking right now. 
But a thread is spinning up another CPU instance to read at another piece of code at the same time. So now you can run two lines of code at the same time on different CPU threads. So that means you can run pieces of code in parallel and you don't have to worry if one CPU gets blocked. So let's say here a CPU is running a receive here. So that's going to get blocked and wait. The other thread can still continue on reading its stuff, doing its things without being blocked. So that is what a thread is. Very cool. So let's make one and let's see what happens. So we're going to do some temp code up here. Let's start a thread. So I'll make a... Um... Yeah, I'll do it later actually. So we're going to use the create thread function in the Windows API. There is ST, uh, STL threads, but we're not going to use those because we're cool. Uh, you can use those if you want, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I use like the create thread one. And the create thread has a bunch of parameters here. We're not going to use... We're going to use like two of them, <laughs> which is nice. We don't really need to worry about most of these attributes uh, or these parameters. So first we have a pointer to thread attributes. Um, if I understand this correctly, this is setting up the security attributes of the threads that we're uh, setting up. So which access um, grants that this thread will have. However, we can just give it a zero or a null pointer to say that you just take the same security attributes as the thread that's spawning, like the thread we are in right now. You just take the same attributes as that one. So we're going to see that pass null pointer there. Then we have stack size. Stack size is how big we want the new stack to be on this new thread. However, we can use type 0 to get the default thread size, or stack size, sorry. So we're just going to type a 0. And now we're getting into some juicy things. So now we have a low pointer to a thread start routine. And this is the starting address where the thread will spawn. So this is the function that the thread will start executing. So this is important. This we want to have. Uh, so if we actually go to this LP thread start routine, I don't know if we can actually, can I symbol search that? LP thread, nope, let's do LP thread start routine. And then it's Alt G that bad boy. Right, okay. So here it is, <laughs> looks great. So it's a type def uh, function pointer and it has a D word as a return, return statement. A D word, like I talked about before, word here is another, uh, another name for um, uh, short. So D word means double word, which means this is an integer. So this is just another, uh, another name for an integer. That is sort of borrowing the x64 uh, assembly language name for an integer here. And then it takes one parameter and that's just an uh, avoid pointer. So LP void stands for use low pointer void. And that's just, you can see it's typed def to avoid pointer. So that's cool. So this is what a thread routine looks like. It returns a D word or an integer and it takes a void pointer as a parameter. Very nice. So let's do that. So I'll do a D word thread func void pointer pointer. <laughs> Very nice. And then we'll use print hello from thread. So we'll just have the thread print a little string here. Very nice. And then we'll put that in our start address. So thread func, there we go. And then here is the void pointer. And this is the parameter that will be passed to the thread function. 
So here we're uh, we're supposed to put in the pointer, the void pointer, to be passed to the new thread. However, right now we don't have any pointer to anything, so I'll use points, put null pointer. We don't care. We don't have any void pointers to, that needs to be put in there. Then we have creation flags. Uh, we don't care about that, so we're just going to do zero. And then we have LP thread ID, and this is a pointer to an integer if we want to get the new thread ID of this thread we're creating. But we don't care about the thread ID, we're not going to use that for anything, so I'll use type null pointer. So there we go. What's the error? <sighs> Argument type D word void pointer is incompatible parameter of type LP thread start routine. Why? Do you have to do a uh, uh, ampersand before for the address? No. Hmm. That's really weird because I'm not getting that error. And I typed in exactly what you typed in. Maybe it's just, you know, I'm just going to compile. <laughs> okay, I still get it. Can I convert argument three? From Same thing. What the hell? I did this earlier. What's the Are error? you using a different compiler, Ewan, or what? No, I'm using MSVC. Huh. It just works. What if I change this to, instead of void pointer, I'll just type the actual... Uh, I'll just type the LP void instead. Did you include the right library? It could be... You've got to include the, the sync API, uh, or at least I did in Mainworks. I don't I know. I didn't actually include that, actually. Yeah, so let's do that. Windows. Doesn't seem like LP void work. Like... Hmm. What am I doing here? I get a warning. Oh, um, are, you, are all of you in x86 mode? Oh, I am. I am in x86 mode. Are you in x64? Yeah, I don't know. If, I don't. I it should might make be an x64 thing. Oh. Yes, it was an. Oh, x, yeah, it, it was an x66 thing. What does it? What does it want for? Uh, maybe it's the. I think it's maybe it's the probably the pointer, right? Yeah. Because if it's asking for a long pointer and you're in x6, oh. uh, x86 mode, it will be wanting a regular pointer, right? I'm not sure. Huh. Okay, that's a weird error. You know what? We're just going to switch to fucking x64. Because <laughs> that's what we should be doing anyway. So let's just go x64 and ignore this error. I'll debug it later. Uh, let's not waste too much time debugging here. Should there be any reason to actually stay in x86? It feels like that's more like compatibility things, but doesn't like pretty much every computer run run at x64 now? Uh, yeah, there's no real reason, I think, to run in x86. Um, yeah, I just, uh, I'm running C++20 and uh, the entire program stopped working now that I switched to uh, x, x64, so yes. there are probably some reasons why not. Just compile it and see. We need to ma just make sure that you can go in uh, that the input here, the vs232.lib, is in is uh, an additional dependency even for x64. But wait, so then when 32 still oh, works okay. 64. Sorry. So that library is not 32 bit. That's just that 32 is just the name for it. What? What's like? Um. Yeah, I'm not sure actually. Okay. But it's probably it's just linking it in 32-bit uh, mode. But I'm not too sure, actually. Interesting. So I'm also just going to print in um, our main thread here. And yes, we need to return a value from our thread func, so we just return zero. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. We're not going to be reading the return values of threads anyways. Routing, unreferenced local variable. I don't want it anymore. There we go. Are you happy? Uh, I don't care about that. So let's see what happens. So if I run a server, 
Whoops, I need to run it in non-debug. There we go. So now we got hello from main thread and hello from thread. Fantastic. So our thread's up and running, so that's good. Um, but let's just make sure that it's actually a thread that's running, and not something else. So what we're going to do is that we're actually going to sleep the thread for a while. Since the main thread and this new thread func that we have made, our new worker thread, they're running parallel to each other, using different CPU cores, most probably. Uh, which means we can sleep this thread for as long as we want, and this server main can still continue doing whatever it wants. So let's try and sleep this thread func just to make sure that it actually works like we're expecting it to. And I don't actually know the sleep function in MSDN. So it's, it. it's just called sleep. It's just called sleep? S. Yeah, it's just called sleep. Sleep. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to input how many milliseconds we're on sleep for. I'll sleep for 2,000. So two seconds. And let's see what happens. Any predictions? It's going to work. First time. Beautifully. Yeah. Hello, hello from main thread. And then two seconds later, hello from thread. That's going to be lucky if it works for the first time. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to run the server. And... You have to join the thread. Right. Oh no, we exited before the thread completed. Oh no. Yes. So that's the oh, issue. Oh shit. Yeah, so we fucked up. So the problem was that... Okay, so we got hello from main thread, but we didn't get hello from thread at all. Um... So, what's the problem here? And you guys already said it, actually, so I don't know why I'm asking the question. The problem is that we're actually returning here, right after... Hello from main thread, we're returning. And after returning here, the program ends. So, if the main program ends, that means everything gets shut down, including all threads. So, they get sort of forcibly shut down. So, we need to make sure our main thread keeps spinning. So in this case, we want sort of the main thread for to wait for the thread to finish. And of course, we could do something like printf waiting for thread. And then just do a while. Uh, yeah, that's going to be annoying. Yeah, let's, let's just do this. Let's just do a bool. B, or not B. Thread is finished. So after calling hello from thread, we're just gonna set uh, thread is finished is true. So it's gonna sleep, print something, and then set the bool to, uh, to say that the thread is finished. Very cool. And then... Oh, oh. But, uh, sorry, can, can it read that? Because it's not a... Some that need to be a mutex. No. Um, uh, well, yeah, you're, you're on the right track, yes. But we actually don't need to worry about that right now. But we're going to talk about mutexes uh, in a while. But yes, that's okay. a good catch. Um, but we don't need mutexes here in this case, because we're only reading it from the main thread. If we were both writing to it, then yes, we would have some problems. Oh, right, okay. But uh, don't worry about that for now. So we're just going to wait. So while not thread is finished, we're just going to wait. Is the while loop that's waiting. So it's going to be the naive implementation here. I'm going to run the server. And it's waiting. And there we go. So we got the waiting. And that was before it entered the while loop. Then two seconds went by. Finally, hello from thread came in. It set the bool to true. And then quit. So then the main thread exits his while loop. And returned. So it just exited the program. Does this make sense? Should I draw some diagrams? I think it makes sense, but. Okay, cool. Can't speak for everyone. Yep. Um, so this is one way of doing it, and this was just sort of the highlight that these threads are working on different uh, on different codes. So they are working in parallel on different codes. So we've sort of proved that to ourselves now. That, okay, this thread is truly independent from this thread when it comes to executing code. Very nice. However, this is a bit wasteful, right? We're just 
eating up CPU cycles just to spin a thread forever or spin a while loop forever. Um, so a better way would be to use a function that's called wait for single object. So wait for single object is quite a generic function. It can do a bunch of different things. But one thing it can do is something called a thread join. So you might have heard that before, thread join. So what does that do? This is my so like a sync point? It is like a sync point, exactly. Cool. Uh, it kind of. <laughs> <All right. laughs> <I don't know. laughs> yeah, so here's how it is. So we have two threads here, right? So they're running, doing their thing. So here's the main thread. Main. <laughs> and then we have the worker. And what the join does is if you think of the, about these two as two branches, right? So worker's doing things, blah, blah, blah. It's doing a lot of things, receiving, blah, blah, blah. And main is doing its own things. And the join is sort of the joining of these two branches into one branch. So instead of working two independently, they go to just working again as synchronously. And that's the concept, at least. That's like sort of, okay, what, what does join mean? Why is it called join? And it's because we're joining two branches into one. What's actually happening is that when main is saying, okay, I want to join with worker. So main says, okay, here, I want to join with the worker thread. What join will do is that it will go to this point here and just wait. That's a clock. <laughs> so main will just wait for worker to finish. So if, for example, so let's say main calls join and waits and worker is over here. Worker is here. Then main will block. So join is a blocking function, which means it won't return until it's finished. So main will wait here. Worker will keep working, doing his thing, blah, 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 blah. Maybe sleeping, maybe doing a scene, whatever it is. And then it will end. So then the join thread will finish. So the, the function returns, essentially. Then it will send a message to the main thread that's joining, or that's waiting. That, okay, I'm done now. I've done my things. And then join will return and main will continue on its way. So that's what thread joining is. It's sort of merging two branches into one. Or if you want to think about it more technically, it's waiting for a thread to finish. And that's kind of what we're doing here, right? That's kind of what we did manually with the while loop. We were just sort of blocking main, blocking it until the thread function is completed and then we continued on. So we were doing it sort of a manual join there. So if you have several worker threads, uh, does main wait for all of them to be completed or? Um, yeah, then you would, if you, if you want to do the same thing, yes, then you would have to wait for all of them to finish. Cool, yeah. Is there a way to wait for only one of them or a few? Yeah, so wait for a single object will only wait for one thread, but then there is also wait for multiple objects. And here you can give an array of objects to wait for. Uh, so there you could input like all threads or some of the threads or whatever you want, really. Gotcha. But so we're going to wait for a single object. And this here takes a handle. So this is kind of the way that most of WinAPI is set up. Kind of like sockets, right? Sockets, as I said, were handles. But they they were written as their own object, written as the socket object, right? But this works essentially the same way. When we create a thread, we don't get like the thread object itself. We get a handle to the thread object. And then through that handle, we can fetch information like its ID or its state or whatever we want to do. Or in this case, wait for it. And as we see in create thread, it returns a handle. So it will return us a handle to the new thread that we just spawned. So I'm just going to save that variable. Handle. Thread. So now we've saved the handle. And now we're going to wait for it. So we're going to wait for single object, thread. And then we have 
a double word here, double word milliseconds, and it's how long we want to wait for. Um, so we could set it up like, okay, let's just wait like a thousand milliseconds, and if nothing happens in the thousand milliseconds, just return and say we failed the wait. Um, or we can set it up to say, I want to wait forever. So it doesn't matter how long it takes, I will wait for this single object. And then we just put in infinite, which is a special, special word here. It's defined as a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, so if we pass in infinite to wait for single object, then it will wait forever. But we could set it up to only wait for a certain amount of time and then return if the wait was successful or not. Threat could be zero. <laughs> okay. I don't know. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll trust myself that it won't be zero. Um, so let's see what happens now. Start it up. Start the server. Waiting for thread. Then hello from thread. And then we return. So what's happening here in the computer is that the first thread spawning the new thread. So the main thread is spawning the slave or the, sorry, the worker thread. I uh, shouldn't use that word. And then it's printing a little bit and then just waiting. So then it's waiting for the join of the other thread. And you know, we can just keep adding sleeps here. Print F, hello darkness, my old friend. I don't know the lyrics of the song. I'm. I've happy. come to talk with you again. I've come to eat your French fries. And then sleep. It's waiting for the thread. So the main thread is stuck here now in wait for single object. While the worker thread is mo walking through this little poem that I wrote. And then as soon as the thread finishes, as soon as it returns, the main thread will have completed the join and return the program. So it will quit. Great. So that's the basics of threads. Um, how to spawn them and how to join them. So that's just two very small parts, or I, I guess it's very important actually, but the two important parts of threading. Like what is a thread and how do you join them? Um, we're not going to talk about some more advanced concepts right now, like uh, mutexes and events and so on. We're going to talk about those actually later, a little bit later, when we're going to have to talk, talk about thread security. Because that's actually probably what you've heard about threads, that they're very scary, they're very insecure, and they create a lot of bugs and crashes. And that's true. But we're going to be careful. Whoops. Okay, any questions before we start uh, modifying our servers to handle multiple clients? I've just been like contemplating like why uh, different users have to have different threads. Like, can't there just be uh, some kind of loop? that kind of like loops through all of the sockets that are currently active and uh, gets the information and then it gets put in a array and then it loops through that array and like you handle that information how you want. Yes, yeah, so you can do that. Yeah. Um, you can put the socket into something called non-blocking mode, which means that receive, instead of waiting for a message to come in, it will just either return the message or return something else to say like, okay, now it's not, there's nothing here. However, right. um, you can sort of think of the difference between that. Either having worker threads that are sort of uh, getting interrupted whenever a message comes in versus having to continuously pull each of the sockets. It's kind of the difference between your phone ringing and you pick it up and talk versus you picking up your phone every once in a while to say, hello, is anyone there? And then putting it <laughs> down again. It's like, it's kind of cycles wasted on something that could be just a phone call. But I mean, that's going to be it anyway, right? Because the thread is going to use cycles uh, to check, but it's just another thread then instead of the main thread, I suppose. 
Uh, yes, but it's gonna be a, a hardware interrupt, so it's actually gonna be put into sleep mode. Um, so it's not oh. like a while loop where it's just spinning, right? It's uh, it's put so, to sleep. Right. And then, so the the hardware like the processor won't be overloaded or whatever. No. Cool. Um, as far as I know. But yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not an expert on big systems, so if you have 10,000 clients, maybe then you have to start thinking about some alternate solution, but um, looping through 10,000 clients every, you know, every frame or whatever, <laughs> even that would be a bit of a stretch, but yeah. Perhaps there are, uh, is a good way to use non-blocking um, for bigger projects, I'm actually not sure. I don't want to speak like I know. Uh, but we're going to do threads because it's hard. All right. So it's time to modify our server now so that we can handle multiple clients. And the way we're going to set this up, actually, is that our main thread... Whoa. That was loud. Our main thread, oh, stupid. Our main thread <laughs> is gonna be like the handshake, right? It's gonna be the guy at the door just accepting clients all the time. So it's gonna be in a loop accepting clients. And every time, every time, every time an accept comes through, it will spawn a thread. And that thread will be responsible for handling that one client. And then whenever a new accept comes in, oops, a new thread will be spawned to handle that new client and so on. And when a client disconnects, that thread will detect that and then end its life. It won't join actually, but it will just end its life. So whenever a client disconnects, we will shut down that thread. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to remove the temp stuff that we made. And I'm going to make this function called uh, client loop <laughs> or something. <laughs> um, so this client loop will be responsible for handling a client. So our while loop, instead of receiving, whoops, we're going to be accepting. So in the while loop, we're going to accept. And then whenever we have accepted a client, so remember, accept will block until a client actually comes in and connects. We're going to spawn a new thread. Okay, thread. So attributes will be null pointer, stack size will be zero, start address will be client loop, parameter will be null pointer for now, we're gonna fix that later, creation flag zero, thread ed, ed, thread id null pointer. Alright, so use default parameters for everything except for the client loop here. And then in the client loop, we need a way to get the socket, right? So we need to pass the socket to this client loop somehow. Have you any ideas about how we could send the socket over to the client loop thread? The void pointer we, parameter? Yeah. How would, would we use the void pointer parameter? We would cast it to something else once we got it in. Yes. So that's good. So a void pointer conveniently is about the same size as a socket uh, type. We could do a pointer to the socket, right? We could do this. Oh, wait, you're meaning actually passing the socket and casting a pointer to the socket itself. Uh, yes, but first of all, let's try this, right? So if I do a pointer to the client, 
for the parameter in the client loop. So this void pointer we are pointed to the to the client sockets. Do you guys have any ideas about this? How this might bite us in the back, bite us in the ass if we do this? A uh, socket client will get deleted when the stack exits, right? Yes. So, yeah. Yes. So that's the first problem, right? If we do something like, okay, so our socket's going to be, uh, client is going to be like, uh, we cast it to a socket pointer, then uh, dereference it. Exactly what uh, Oliver just said could happen, right? If this is particularly slow, let's say it takes a while to spawn the thread, like it has to do a bunch of things on the kernel level, and the main thread just continues, this client variable might go out of scope before this is actually run. Because that's the thing with threads, we have no guarantees when it will start up, we have no guarantees how fast it's going to be, maybe there's a lot of other stuff going on so it actually never gets to run it immediately, it actually has to wait a little bit before running the thread. So we have no guarantees when this will be run. So this is extremely dangerous. So what we'll do instead is we'll just cast the socket itself, since it's essentially it's an integer, right? We'll just cast the socket itself to a void pointer. Whoops. This is a little bit dirty. We could probably solve this in a lot better ways. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to cast the client to a void pointer. And this won't give us a pointer to the client variable. It will cast the value itself to a void pointer. So this pointer, this void pointer here, won't be a valid pointer to some part of memory. It will just essentially just be a number. <laughs> like we'll just treat it as if it's a number. Um, and we'll do this for now. It's it's a little bit dirty, but you know, it is what it is. Later on, when we do a little bit more sophisticated stuff, we'll uh, talk about how to how to do this a little bit more sanely, when we actually need to pass in more info than just a socket. We need to pass in a little bit more info. But we'll take it as it comes. So then on the other side, inside of the thread, we're just going to cast the void pointer back to a socket. A value of type void pointer cannot be used to initialize an entity of type socket. What? Yes, you can. Man, I'm getting so many weird errors today. I've done this before. I've done it in, on the server. Do I have to do like fucking reinterpret cast? Reinterpret cast. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> it worked before. <laughs> works on my works on my machine. So I'm just going to do it, use the reinterpret cast, which is essentially the same thing as a cast. Uh, it just is a little bit more strong. Uh, so it apparently had some typing uh, checks in place to say like, hey, what you're doing, you're trying to cast a void pointer to a socket. You can't do that. Um, but reinterpret cast will just be like, yeah, whatever, I'm going to do it. So um, we're converting the void pointer back to a socket here. So it's not a pointer to a socket, it will be the socket itself. So now we have the client sockets and now we're gonna start spinning. So we'll make a while loop, uh, show our buffer, whoops, we've done this before, receive client buffer 1024.0, printf. Oops, and receive size. There we go. So now in the client worker thread, we're spinning to just keep receiving from that client. So it will sort of host that client, if you will. 
And have... also, we got to check for minus one, right? And exit the thread. Ah, no. yes, exactly. Very good. So we also need to check if the receive size is minus one. And then we need to get out of here because the client is connected. There we go. So now we have the main thread. It's a kind of the doorman, right? It's sort of accepting guests into the hotel or whatever, <laughs> if you want to do some sort of uh, analogy here. Its job is to accept clients. And it just does that forever. And when a client comes in, it says hello, and then it's, you know, calls over a waiter or something <laughs> with a thread to actually handle that guest. And that thread will just keep spinning forever, reading, reading, reading. So we have these two concept of threads. And of course, it would have multiple of these receive threads, one for every client that actually connects. Um, but that's the thought. So let's see if it actually works. I would be amazed if this works on the first try. Whoop. Must return a value. Zero. Okay. So we'll start up a server. One, two, three. Oh. Oh, I think I... Oh my goodness. Okay, let's just close all the servers. <laughs> so I failed to bind, probably because another server was currently running on that port. There we go. And then we'll spawn up a client. One, two, three. Hello. How's, how are you? Okay, so it works for this case. One client is seeming fine. And let's spawn up another client. Sup? Oh my goodness, it's wor working. Yes, it's working. I'm cool. Okay. And if I disconnect this client, hopefully, there we go. We got a client disconnected. And if I disconnect the other client, we get another client disconnected, and both of those threads will exit. So now we have a way to handle multiple clients at once. We have the accepting thread, and then we have the client thread. And we have only one accept thread and multiple client threads. And this is the general way you want to structure TCP connections. Can I see the main function one more time real quick? Thank you. So we're not doing the we're not doing the wait for a single object anymore? Uh no. So that comes that actually we didn't need that right now. <laughs> because okay. right, uh, yeah, right. we don't care when a client disconnects. Uh but for example, if we were shutting down the server then we will probably send sort of message to the threads in some way to say like, hey, we're shutting down, like disconnect all of the clients smoothly. And then we would wait for all of those threads to exit before we exited the server. Just to make sure that all the clients get like a nice disconnecting message, uh, like a disconnect handshake before we shut down the server. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so that's multi-user. Um, let's um, let's do a quick exercise before we leave for today. I'm gonna host this server and have you guys connect to it, and let's see what happens. If you guys are up for that, so I'm actually gonna shut down the um, this server. It's been doing great. It's been really fun actually to read your messages. Uh, I'm going to shut it down and then I'm going to host this server, this new chat server, on port um, 35001. 
So now this server is open for you guys to connect. You could use... What the fuck? Uh, you send a message? Uh, I don't know. I just sent Oliver here. What the hell is happening? <laughs> uh, no clue. You broke it, Ollie. <laughs> Oliver, for fuck's sake. I just sent a string, like, nothing... Let's see. Try this Do again. I have to... Is someone spamming empty messages? Hello? No, it's good. Oliver, what, what are, are you doing? I... <laughs> <laughs> I have no clue. I have a while loop, but I'm not sending... Well, I guess I'd... I don't think I am, at least. Uh, is C in a blocking function? Uh... Yeah, yeah it, should, it should wait for, for input, yeah. Yeah. Uh... Okay. That's weird. Let's run it again. <laughs> Oliver, fix your shit. <laughs> I'm trying my best. <laughs> Oliver. Hello. Oh yes. Okay, nice. There you go. I I had a closed socket. Maybe that was it. Oh, okay. That's it was in the while loop, I just realized. That's not the best, probably. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, for some, so for some reason, my server wasn't... That was interesting. Maybe we should debug that. Uh, but actually, no, I think it's my on my side, because like I have... The socket is created inside a while loop. Oh. Which is super cursed. Oh, weird. that's... Yeah, that's very cursed. Uh... Connect results. Yeah, I should just put the send thing in the the thing and not the. Yeah, right. Don't mind me. I'm just breaking the server. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> God damn it! All right. So um, so very nice. So now we have a multi-user server. Um, try to do this locally. So either if you're on the, um, if you're in the, com uh, if you're at school, you could have one person hosting the server, and hopefully you will be on the same local network. Hopefully Alan has set it up that way. So then you could just connect to your local address. You can get it by, uh, you can get it by running ipconfig in your CMD to get your local IPv4 address. So hopefully you guys can host a local server um, at school and then have yourself connect to that and then try, try it out. Or you can do what I did, which is just host the server locally and then just connect to 127.0.0.1 if you want. It uh, doesn't really matter, but it would be fun for you guys to try out that. Or if you're even super, uh, if you're super fancy, uh, if you're sort of, for example, working from home or something, you can try opening up a port on your router to port forward to your server and then have your classmates connect to that and see if you can get that working. Um, and of course, you know, I'll be here. Just post, uh, post in Discord if you're having trouble and uh, I'll help you out if you need help with port forwarding or anything like that. But yes. Yeah. Hey, Emil? Yeah? A uh, question. Uh, I went to the bathroom a bit a while back and did you put anything in the input because I sat down and like oh shit there is another include uh, at the top and you started copying the code which I saw from your side and uh, right now I have a linker error so did you put in anything else in the the inputs what the, what's the linker error uh Whoa. Isn't it, you know, properties uh, linker? It's input. me again, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Oliver. <laughs> Fucking Oliver. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, uh, continue. Uh, yeah. Uh, did we put anything into into the linkers or like in Visual Studios? Uh, well, we can... nothing except for uh, VS two thirty two. 
Like if you switch to x64, you need to add it again for yeah. that. If you're next, if you switch to x64, you need to go in here. Either x64 or use all platforms and just make sure the VS232 is in there. Okay, that was not in there. VH. Yeah. So that should fix it. Uh, can you go back to the client code to see what I did wrong? Uh, wait, so gets s. What was that again? It reads one line from the command prompt. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, well, let's also read, like, if I print something, uh, stdc out, will that also read that? No. Not that I know of, at least. But I don't know Good. actually what happens if you, uh, if you, um... Uh, I don't think it will be null terminated. I think um, C++ strings do, like, they send down the size. So it will come in as a string, and then you'll just put, like, string.length uh, in your send. Mm -hmm. as, as the, instead of, like, calling sterlin. Because sterlin only works on um, null terminated strings. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, it's uh... a bit, it's going to be a bit fucky if you mix uh, C++ uh, STL stuff and uh, C strings. But uh, cool. you can try. See what I'm going to see again now, and maybe I break everything again. Let's see. Hello! No, okay. Hey, hooray! Good, good. There we go. Nice. Very nice. All right, cool. So let's end the lesson here. Uh, yesterday, or sorry, yesterday, tomorrow is a free day, so um, I'll will be I'll be at work uh, doing stuff. So I unfortunately will not be available that much. But just uh, try to work on this. Uh, this is recorded, so I'll upload it to YouTube. Like, watch this through if you feel like you need to have a refresher and everything we talked about today. But, um, yeah, on Monday will be a live lesson at school. So get hype. And we'll we go. will take from here. And I I'm not quite sure what we're going to be doing. If we're going to make something a little bit more of a sophisticated chat client. Or if we're going to jump straight into making a game. I'll have to ponder that over the weekend. Uh, but we'll see on Monday. But we're going to continue from here. Uh, is Monday going to start at 14 as well? On Monday, we will start at 10. Right. So 10 to 15. All right, cool. If there are no further questions. Sounds awesome. Uh, I have one more. Yeah. So did you say the exercise is to connect to your server with basically the client we have already? <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, you can connect to my server, but I want you to write your own as well. Uh, yeah. So either if you connect to it um, locally or you host it on your local network or online, it doesn't really matter. As long as you write the server and it works, then that's fine. Awesome. You too okay. can be DDoSed by Oliver. Yes, exactly. You too can have the the thrill. It was an accident, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> And then we already have the B-movie script here, so that's great. Nice. What is, why does one say B-man and the other one says A-man? That's a bit rude. Well, no Adam, idea. today we are men. <laughs> oh, well. Okay, guys. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, and I'll see you on Monday. And yeah, don't be afraid to just post questions here or just poke me on Discord directly. It doesn't really matter. And I'll I'll help you out if you have any issues. Did you change shirt? Yeah, I changed shirt like three times actually during this uh, lecture, so that's great. So, okay, good, good. Yeah, good I, I'm very I'm very sneaky. All right, guys. See ya. Have a good weekend. See ya. Take care. Bye. 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 This is between us two. I'll see you. Bye-bye.